Hi there. In this video, uh, this video continues from the previous video that I did on completing a square, but I'm going to show you how to calculate the coordinates of the turning point, the nature of this turning point, and also the range of a given quadratic equation. Okay? So let's begin. So, uh, how do we calculate the coordinates of the turning point? So in this case, we have two options only with regards to a quadratic. We can either have a maximum point from a maximum curve or a minimum point from a minimum curve. So, and the turning points are highlighted in blue, okay? Turning points, in other words, are points whereby if you draw a tangent at these points, the gradient of the tangent is zero. So. Let me show you how to work out the coordinates of this turning point for a quadratic. So if you're given a quadratic equation y equals ax squared plus bx plus c, the first step is you need to complete the square of the quadratic. Okay. So if you're not familiar with completing a square, I would encourage you to watch the previous video that I did um, going through the method in a step-by-step -step manner of how we complete the square. So we need to complete the square of that quadratic uh, and write it in the form a into x plus h squared plus k. And once you've done that, in order to work out the coordinates of the turning point, uh, we use the result minus hk. So minus h is the x coordinate of the turning point and k is the y coordinate of the turning point, okay? So you'll get the values of h and k for when you complete the square of your quadratic. Now, in order to find the nature of the turning point, so by nature, we mean finding out what kind of turning point we have. So on a previous screenshot, remember, for a quadratic, we have either a maximum point or a minimum point, okay? Now, to work out the nature, this can be found by uh, the value of a in the given quadratic equation. Now, if the value of a is greater than zero, we have a minimum turning point, and if the value of a is less than zero, we'll have a maximum turning point. So, moving on to range, the range tells us the region where a given equation lies on a graph, okay? So again, the value of A is used to determine the range of a quadratic curve. So in this case, if A is greater than zero, then the range will be Y, and it's always Y, so it's Y greater than or equal to K. And remember, K comes from when you complete the square of your quadratic. Okay, so memorize this. If a is greater than zero, the range will be y is greater than or equal to k. Okay, and the second option, so the second and only option, if a is less than zero, the range will be y less than or equal to k. Okay, so let's consider some examples. So I have an example, example one. Use completing a square to find the coordinates of the turning point and its nature and also state the range. And in part A, y is equal to minus three x squared plus 12 x plus five. Back to the paper and pen. So we have y is equal to minus three x squared plus 12 x plus five. So the first step is we need to complete the square of the quadratic. So let me copy down the quadratic, minus three x squared plus 12 x plus five. So in the last video, so remember I went through the steps showing you how we complete the square. So there's four steps in total. So let me go through the four steps again. Step number one, write the x squared and x terms in a bracket. So let's implement that stage here. So let's complete the square. Here is step one. We write the x squared term, which is minus 3x squared and the x term, which is plus 12x, in a bracket. So that completes step number one, okay? 
So this takes us to step number two. So in step number two, let's refer to uh, this example. Take out the coefficient of x squared as a common factor, okay? So in this example here, currently, the coefficient of x squared is minus three. So if I take that out as a common factor from this bracket, I'm left with x squared minus four x plus the five at the end. So that completes step number two. That takes us to step number three. So in step number three, so let's refer to this example here. So we need to add in this bracket half the coefficient of x and square that term. But at the same time, you need to subtract what you've added. So we're subtracting whatever term you have here, multiply by that squared term, okay? So let's implement that step here. So I have minus three, let me copy that down. We have x squared minus four x, and we always add as we discussed. So green pen means we always add here. We're adding half the coefficient of x and we square. So the coefficient of x is minus four. Half of that is minus two. Don't forget to square. So it's minus two squared plus five at the end. And we subtract always outside and we're subtracting what we've added. So we've added minus three times minus two squared. So outside, we need to subtract the same amount, minus three times minus two squared, okay? So that completes step number three. So that takes us to the last step, step number four. In the last example from the previous video, step number four is, what you need to do is, you need to bring down one of these x's, you need to bring down one of these squared terms, close the bracket and square the entire bracket. And all that you need to do lastly is simplify this n term here. And when you simplify that, that's gonna give you the value of k, okay? So let's put that into practice. So we have minus three from here. Bring down one of these x terms. Bring down one of the minus twos. Close that bracket and square it. And this is always true. So when you multiply x minus two squared, you're going to get x squared minus four x plus four, okay? And all we do now is simplify this term here to calculate k. So we have plus five. Minus two squared is plus four. Four times minus three is minus 12. But minus 12 times minus is plus 12. Okay, so in this case, when we tidy this up, we're gonna get minus three into x minus two squared, five plus 12 is 17. So this is what you should have for when you complete the square of that quadratic, okay? Now, if you make the comparison with a into x plus h squared plus k, so if we make the comparison of the answer here with the form for when you complete the square, a by comparison is minus three, h by comparison is minus two, k by comparison is 17. So we need these values in order to work out the coordinates of the turning point. So remember, in order to work out the coordinates of the turning point, we need to use the result minus h and k, okay? So back to the paper and pen. So remember the turning point uh, formula for the coordinates, it's minus h and k. So for h, we had minus two. So it's minus of a minus two being a plus two. The k value is 17. So the coordinates of the turning point are 2, 17, okay? So this is the x and y value of the coordinates. So let's work out the nature of this turning point. So for nature, let's refer back to the screenshot. 
So remember, if A is greater than zero, it's going to be a minimum turning point. If A is less than zero, it's a maximum turning point. So back to the paper and pen. So our A value, our A value is minus three, okay? A, so that A value of minus three is the same as, and it should be the same as always, the coefficient of x squared in your quadratic. So this A in front of x squared and the A for when you complete the square should be the same. So it's minus three. So let's note that down. A is minus three. Minus three is less than zero. So in this case, we have a maximum turning point. Okay. So that is what we, that's what we have with regard to the nature. Okay. And finally, let's state the range. So for the range, let's remind ourselves of the, of the concept. So back to the screenshot. So once again, um, from A, if A is greater than zero, the range is Y greater than or equal to K. However, if A is less than zero, the range is Y less than and equal to K. So back to the paper and pen. So our A value is minus three, which is less than zero. So the range is Y less than or equal to K. Now our K value for when we completed the square is 17. So it's y less than or equal to 17. So remember the idea of range. This means that the whole quadratic lies below the line y equals 17. So I have an out for example. So part b. So we have this quadratic in part b. So the quadratic reads y is equal to x squared minus 6x plus 1. So back to the paper in pen. So here's our quadratic y is equal to x squared minus 6x plus 1. So the first step, let's complete the square. So let's copy down the quadratic x squared minus 6x plus 1. So remember the steps for when we complete the square. Step number one, remember, write the x squared term and the x term in a bracket. So here is step number two. So the coefficient of x squared here is plus one. So we need to take out one as a common factor and we're left with x squared minus six x plus the one at the end. So this takes us nicely to Step number three, let's remind ourselves of step number three. So remember in the last video, step number three is we need to add inside the bracket half of the coefficient of x and you need to square that term. But outside at the same time, you need to subtract whatever you've added. So you need to subtract the term multiplied by the squared term outside, okay? So let's see this in action again over here in the current example. So I copy down the one, I copy down the x squared minus six x, and we always add here. So always add here. And we're adding half the coefficient of x. So the coefficient of x is minus six. Half of minus six is minus three. Don't forget to square, okay? plus one, so plus one, and we need to subtract at the same time, so 100% subtract here, and we're subtracting whatever we've added, so we've added one times minus three squared, so outside we need to subtract one times minus three squared, okay? So this takes us nicely to step number four, Let's refer to uh, the example that I explained um, in the previous video. So in step number four, we bring down one of these x terms. We bring down one of the square terms from step three. We close the bracket and we square that bracket. And all we do is simplify this n term here to calculate what k is. Okay. 
So let's implement the idea here. So I have one, so here's my one. I bring down one of these x's. I bring down one of the minus threes. I close the bracket and I square that. So you can double check this, x minus three squared. When you multiply, it's x squared minus six x plus nine. And all we do now is simplify this n term. So we have the plus one, okay, uh, minus, and let's calculate this. Minus three squared is plus nine, times one is still plus nine. So plus nine into a minus is a minus nine. So our answer should be one into x minus three squared, one minus nine, minus eight. So this should be the solution for when you complete the square of the quadratic. So now let's make a quick comparison with a into x plus h squared plus k. So by comparison, our a is plus one, our h, so h is minus three, and the k value is minus eight, okay? So these are the values of a, h, and k. So we need these in order to work out the coordinates of the turning point. So let's refer to the screenshot to remind ourselves of how to work out the turning point. So remember the turning point result, uh, it's minus h, k. So back to the paper and pen. So let me note down the formula for the turning point. It's minus h and k to work out the coordinates. So our h value is minus three. So it's a minus of a minus three, which is a plus three. K value being minus eight, okay? Secondly, let's work out the nature. So what kind of turning point we have. So back to the screenshot. So remember for the nature, we need to observe the value of a. If the a value is greater than zero, it's a minimum. If the a value is less than zero, it's a maximum. So back to the paper and pen. So our a value is one. One is greater than zero. So we have a minimum turning point. Okay. So to complete this example, let's state the range. So uh, back to the screenshot. So for the range, again, observe the value of a. If a is greater than zero, the range is y greater than or equal to k. If a is less than zero, the range is y less than or equal to k, okay? So back to the paper and pen. So our a value is one. One is bigger than zero. Range therefore y bigger than or equal to k. So our k value from completing the square is minus eight. So it's y bigger than or equal to minus eight. So that completes this example. So here are the steps. So that completes uh, part B. And that also sadly ends this video. So I hope you found this video helpful. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did enjoy the video, a like is very much appreciated. Do plenty of practice related questions and I hope to see you soon. Thank you.